Okay, so this is November 3rd, 2022, and we will start with this patient right here. So this is a 32-year-old female, presents to the emergency department with complaints of severe right lower quadrant abdominal pain, multiple episodes of nausea and vomiting. Her pain is rated at 7 to 8 out of 10, and the pain is unrelieved by pain medications at home. The patient is unable to tolerate any PO intake. a past medical history of a single functioning kidney uh, with a kidney donation in the past. She has no known drug allergies. As for the patient's social history, she lives with a spouse. She has no children. She is employed full-time in an office setting. The patient denies any smoking or drug use. And the patient admits to drinking alcohol socially. So for the emergency room examination, her vital signs were as follows. Temperature of 99.8 with a heart rate of 87. Blood pressure 140 over 80. And an oxygen saturation of 96. And that is on room air. She is awake. Alert and oriented times three. She does appear to be in moderate distress. Her lung sounds are clear. For cardiovascular, her heart rate and rhythm is regular. There is no murmur, rub, click, or gallop. As for GI, she has hypoactive bowel sounds and moderate diffuse tenderness in the right lower quadrant. Lab report, she has a WBC level of 14,000 with a left shift, slightly elevated, calcium is within normal limits at 10.5, all electrolytes are within normal limits, and a urinalysis shows multiple red blood cells which was sent for cultures, which are still pending. All other labs were unremarkable. A lower abdominal ultrasound was performed. This was positive for an ileus with no evidence of obstruction or free air. Also noted was a 9mm stone located in the right ureter with moderate obstruction. There was also some dilatation of the renal pelvis. In the emergency room, the interventions include peripheral, peripheral IV placement into the right anterior area, IV fluids of normal saline, 
We're started at 75 mils an hour and also one dose of IV Zofran, 4 milligrams. The patient will remain NPO, nothing by mouth except for sips of water with medications and a surgical consult was placed. A surgical consult was done in the emergency room and the impression was that the patient needed to be rolled out for appendicitis. A urology consult was also done and the impression was that patient's pain was due to microscopic hematoria as well as a large stone noted on the CAT scan. The working diagnosis is reported to be nephrolithiasis causing renal colic. The patient's BUN is 18 with a creatinine of 1.2. Okay. So as for the assessment and plan, the urologist met with the patient in the emergency room and the urology recommendation is as follows. No lithotripsy or ureteroscopic intervention is indicated at this time. Await the stone to pass spontaneously, and in the meantime, monitor renal function closely. Avoid alpha blockers and NSAIDs, and we will begin straining the urine for stones. An inpatient admission to the medical surgical unit is recommended for further monitoring and treatment. The patient is in agreement with this plan. In the evening, the patient was transferred to the medical surgical floor and had a second episode of pain, requiring IV pain medication, as well as another episode of nausea and vomiting. At this time, IV fluids were increased and the patient continued to be NPO. Pain medication will be on a PRN every four hour basis. Later on in the evening, the patient did have another acute episode of pain during urination. Pain was relieved with a PRN dose of IV morphine. A stone was found in the strained urine, which was sent to the laboratory for analysis. The patient was then started on a clear liquid diet, which was tolerated with no nausea or vomiting. orders remain for IV fluids, PRN antiemetics, PRN IV morphine for pain every four hours, continue to strain all urine, and send any stones to the laboratory for analysis. The patient can be out of bed as tolerated. patient to remain on a clear liquid diet, which can be advanced as tolerated. 
The next morning, the patient's vital signs are recorded as a temperature of 98.6, heart rate of 70, with a regular rate and rhythm. Respirations are 12, non-labored, and the blood pressure is 120 over 68. Oxygen saturation is 96% on room air, and the patient has a pain level of 0 out of 10. The patient remains A and O times 3. The patient has started ambulating independently, and the patient is tolerating 95% of a regular diet. Her BUN and creatinine have remained stable. BUN is 16, and a creatinine is 0.8. The patient is thought to be stable for discharge home. Discharge orders and instructions have been written and provided to the patient. The patient will be discharged home with a recommended follow-up with a primary care physician as well as a urologist in one week. The patient gives 100% understanding of the discharge instructions. The patient was discharged home, accompanied by her spouse. Okay, so now we're moving on. This is patient number two, and today's date is November 6th, 2022. This is a 75-year-old male. He arrives at the emergency department via ambulance, complaining of acute onset of dyspnea, as well as a productive cough. He is accompanied by his wife in the emergency room. His past medical history is being provided by his wife. She reports that his symptoms have been progressive and they have worsened over the past 24 hours. His dyspnea is worse with exertion and he has required two pillows for sleeping. The patient denies any chest pain. He does, however, have mild edema of his bilateral lower extremities. The patient is placed on a low salt diet, but his wife reports that he is often non-compliant with his diet restrictions. His current medication list includes a potassium supplement as well as Lasix, 20 milligrams by mouth daily. His past medical history includes CAD as well as CHF, anxiety, and hypertension. He is currently A and O times 2. He is disoriented to time.
His vital signs are as follows in the emergency room. Temperature of 98.1. Blood pressure is 152 over 98. Heart rate is 112. Respirations are 30. He is currently dyspneic and there is positive jugular vein distension. He has bibasal or rails. A chest x-ray, which was performed in the emergency room, is consistent with CHF exacerbation and a small right pleural effusion. There is slight pulmonary congestion. An EKG was also performed, which is consistent with ischemic changes. His heart rhythm is sinus tachycardia. His cardiac enzymes are within normal limits. He is anemic with a hemoglobin of 8.2, hematocrit 26. He is hypoxic with an oxygen saturation of 82 on room air. ABGs were also performed in the emergency room. There's no evidence of acidosis. He is in AKI as well, with a BUN of 20 and a creatinine of 2.1. His potassium is within normal limits at 3.8. Glucose is 109. His emergency room Treatment includes IV Lasix, 80 milligrams, oxygen via nasal cannula at 3 liters. He did have some uh, diuresis, about 130 mils via urine output. His admitting diagnosis is CHF exacerbation. He will be admitted to the ICU. Upon arrival in the ICU, his vitals are as follows. He is afebrile with a temperature of 98.2, hypertensive with a blood pressure of 160 over 99. His heart rate is still tachycardic at 108, and his respirations remain elevated at 29. And he remains hypoxic on room air with an oxygen saturation of 84 and 96 on 3 liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. There is no evidence of an MI. His weight is 229 pounds. He will be treated routinely with 
IV Lasix, 40 milligrams, BID. He is placed on bed rest. A repeat EKG will be performed, and an echo has been ordered by cardio. Now we are on day two of care. This is November 7th, 2022. Patient remains in the ICU. Vital signs are as follows. Temperature of 98.0. Blood pressure is 148 over 92. Heart rate has improved at 96, and respirations are 24. Okay, with some aggressive diuresis, his weight has come down 7 pounds. He still complains of some mild shortness of breath though improved, and he remains on oxygen at 3 liters, nasal cannula. His oxygen saturation is 87 on room air, and 96 on oxygen. He is now A and O times 3. There is slight improvement on his chest x-ray. He is currently in sinus rhythm. An echo was performed, revealing a left ventricular ejection fraction of 42%. His edema is slightly improved. The patient has been started on a full liquid diet, advanced as tolerated. The patient is stable for transfer to the telemetry unit. Okay, day number three. This is November 8th, 2022. The patient is stable on the tele unit. Vital signs are temperature 98.3. Blood pressure is improved at 138 over 86. Heart rate is 94. And respirations are 22. Patient remains slightly dyspneic at rest, though improved respiratory status. He remains with mild edema, bilateral ankles. His chest x ray this AM showed mild improvement with no evidence of infiltrate. His Lasix has been adjusted to 40 milligrams by mouth. His oxygen saturation is improved, however, still remains below the threshold of 90%. He is 89% on room air and continues to require oxygen at one liter nasal cannula with an oxygen saturation of 97%. He has been out of bed with physical therapy and was able to ambulate 
12 feet with the assist of one. He was able to tolerate a low sodium cardiac diet, of which he is consuming approximately 75%. His labs are improved with a hemoglobin of 9.8, Medicrit 29. His renals have improved with a BUN of 20 and a creatinine of 1.8. Now we are on day four of care. This is November 9th, 2022. The patient has been transferred to the med surge unit. His vitals are as follows. Temperature of 98.2. He has a blood pressure of 136 over 78. Heart rate is 84 and respirations are 16. Discharge orders have been entered. The patient can continue all home medications. The patient has been scheduled for an outpatient stress test, as well as a colonoscopy. He will be discharged home with his spouse, and he will receive home health care with an RN, as well as physical therapy. He will follow with the cardiac rehab program, and the patient will be discharged home today. Okay, so here we have patient number three. Today's date is November 9th, 2022. It's about 1400. So this patient is a 50-year-old female who presented to the emergency room with a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation as well as mitral stenosis. She arrived complaining of the following symptoms, an intermittent, rapid, and irregular heart rate, which has been occurring for the past five weeks. Today, she reports exercising when she developed a sudden onset of persistent palpitations extreme lightheadedness, as well as shortness of breath, which prompted her visit to the emergency room. She is currently on no medications. She has no pertinent past medical history. Her vital signs are as follows in the emergency room. Temperature is 98.4. She is hypotensive with a blood pressure of 87 over 55. She is tachycardic with a heart rate of 182 which has gone up to 260. The rhythm is irregularly irregular. Her respirations are 25 per minute. She is hypoxic on room air with a pulse.
Apple socks of 86%. Oxygen via nasal cannula at 3 liters was administered. Improving her oxygen saturation to 98%. In the emergency room, an EKG was done, which showed atrial fibrillation. A chest x-ray was also performed, showing an enlarged left atrium, interstitial fluid, and pulmonary congestion, which is consistent with increased pulmonary venous pressure. On physical examination, she has rails and rumbling. She has a mid-diastolic heart murmur noted on chest auscultation. Emergency room treatment includes oxygen, 3 liters via nasal cannula, IV fluids at a rate of 40 mils per hour. She was started on a cardizem drip. There was mild improvement in her heart rate with the administration of cardizem bringing it down to 130 and her blood pressure has improved at 112 over 64. She still complains of extreme shortness of breath. The patient will be admitted to the ICU with a diagnosis of rapid AFib and a suspected mitral stenosis and pulmonary congestion. Upon arrival to the ICU, the patient continues to be tachycardic with a heart rate of 134. Also continues to complain of shortness of breath and lightheadedness. Oxygen saturation is 98% on 3 liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. Her vital signs are as follows. Temperature of 97.2. Blood pressure 120 over 70. Her heart rate is 134. Irregularly irregular and her respirations are 18. Orders have been placed for a TEE and a cardiac catheterization, and the patient continues on IV cardizem. Okay, this is day two of care, November 10th, 2022. The patient remains in the ICU, still in AFib. The patient continues to complain of lightheadedness and shortness of breath, but denies chest pain. The patient remains hypoxic on room air at 87% with an improved oxygen saturation of 97 on 3 liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. A TEE was completed. Results have been attached to the patient's chart, showing mitral stenosis as well as regurgitation. Cardiac catheterization has also been completed. 
showing mitral stenosis with valve morphology unfavorable for repair. EF is 60%, and there is an elevated pulmonary artery pressure of 35. The patient is not considered a high risk for surgery. We will plan for mitral valve replacement during this admission. Cardiovascular surgical consult has been requested. The patient's vital signs are as follows. 98.7 Blood pressure 122 over 68 Heart rate is 102 Remains irregularly irregular and her respirations are 18 patient will be placed NPO after midnight for surgery in the morning. Procedure to be performed, mitral valve replacement. Now we are on day three of care. This is November 11th, 2022. The patient went to the OR today. She is post mitral valve replacement. She is admitted to the CCU post surgery. Her vital signs are as follows temperature of 98.9, blood pressure is 122 over 67. Her heart rate is 110 and irregularly irregular. She will remain on a ventilator. Her oxygen saturation is currently 97% on vent. Pacer wires are in place, as well as central and arterial lines. The patient has a chest tube, which is currently draining, and she's been placed on PCA morphine for pain control. We are on day four of care. This is November 12th, 2022. The patient remains in the ICU. The patient's vital signs are as follows. She is a febrile with a temperature of 98.2. Blood pressure is 121 over 62. Heart rate is improved at 100. The patient has been extubated and is currently saturating 98% on 3 liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. She continues on morphine, PCA, for pain. Some meds are being adjusted to PO root. She has been out of bed to the chair with a cyst of one. And she is ambulating in her room with some assistance. She has been placed on a clear liquid diet. The cardizem drip as well as the A-line have been discontinued. Her surgical site looks clean, dry, and intact. She is 
stable for transfer to the telemetry unit. You will remain with a chest tube monitoring drainage. of which there has been 15 milliliters of output over the past shift. Okay, we are on day five of care. This is November 13th, 2022. The patient remains on the telemetry unit. Vital signs, temperature of 98.6. Blood pressure is 119 over 72. Heart rate is improved at 94 with respirations at 18. She remains in AFib on the monitor. Her chest tube has been discontinued. Oxygen saturation is 96 on 2 liters via nasal cannula. Her surgical dressing has been changed by the surgeon. There was a small amount of clear drainage from the dressing. There is no redness or swelling noted at the wound site. PCA has been discontinued. The patient is placed on PO, PRN pain medications. Her diet has been advanced to full liquid. She continues to get out of bed as tolerated and is able to ambulate in her room with a walker. The patient's vital signs are as follows. Temperature of 98.1. Blood pressure is 122 over 78. Heart rate is 92. Patient remains in AFib on the monitor and respirations are 17. The patient has been ambulating in the hall with the use of oxygen and assistance of one. The patient has been able to wean oxygen down to one liter nasal cannula with a stable pulse ox of 98%. The surgical wound site looks clean and dry without any redness or swelling. There is a scant amount of clear drainage on the dressing. The pacer wires have been discontinued. All medications have been transitioned to PO root. The patient has no complaints at this time, and all labs are within normal limits. We are on the final day of care. This is care day seven. The patient is planned for discharge to home today with family care. The patient's vital signs. Temperature is 98.4. Blood pressure is 116 over 76. 
Heart rate is 90 and respirations are 20. The patient has been weaned off of oxygen and is currently saturating 96 on room air. The patient has no complaints at this time. Medication reconciliation has been done and attached to the chart, as well as provided to the patient. The patient is ambulating with assistance of one. The surgical wound site remains clear with no drainage, no redness, and no swelling. The patient and family verbalize understanding of the discharge plan. The patient will be discharged home today. Okay, so that is the end of the video. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much.